Atomism is a philosophical doctrine that holds that all matter is made up of tiny, indivisible particles called atoms. The concept of atomism dates back to ancient Greece, but it was not until the 17th century that it began to gain scientific support. Today, atomism provides the philosophical foundation for the physical sciences, like chemistry and physics. We can begin by discussing the key tenets of atomism. These concepts are usually a large part of high school level chemistry and physics classes. Let's review them. 1. Atoms are the fundamental building blocks of the universe. 2. Atoms are solid and impenetrable. They cannot be cut or divided into smaller parts. Even when an atom is split by overcoming the strong nuclear force the end result is still atoms. 3. Atoms are in constant motion. They collide with each other and form different substances. 4. Atoms are infinite in number. There is no limit to the number of atoms in the universe. 5. Atoms differ from each other in shape, size, and mass. This is why different substances have different properties. Now, we will examine the history of atomism. The ancient Greek atomists were Leucippus and Democritus, who lived in the 5th century BCE. Leucippus believed that the universe was made up of two things, atoms and void. Atoms were solid, indivisible, and indestructible particles. Void was emptiness, or the space between atoms. This theory of atomism was further developed by his student Democritus. He added that atoms are infinite in number and differ from each other in shape, size, and mass. He also argued that the motion of atoms is governed by physical laws. Interest in atomism declined during the Middle Ages for a number of reasons. Christian theologians dismissed the concept as being in opposition to their beliefs about God and the human soul. There was also a general decline in the influence of Greek philosophy other than the mainstream of Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, all of whom rejected atomism. We also have to consider that there was simply not much evidence to support atomism in the Middle Ages. Those few who did practice a form of science at the time did not have the tools and technology to observe atoms directly. As a result, atomism remained a speculative theory and, as such, was not widely accepted. Despite the decline of interest in atomism, some medieval philosophers did continue to study and develop the theory. The Jewish philosopher Maimonides wrote a commentary on Aristotle's physics where he tried to reconcile this philosophy with atomism. Others, such as John Philoponus and Robert Grostesta, used the concepts of atomism to begin the development of the scientific method. Atomism was revived in the 17th century by scientists such as Pierre Gassendi and Robert Boyle. Gassendi and Boyle argued that atomism could provide a scientific explanation for the properties of matter. Gassendi believed that it was the best way to explain the properties of matter, such as its elasticity and divisibility. Boyle used atomism to explain the behavior of gases and the nature of chemical change. In the 19th century, John Dalton developed his atomic theory, which provided a more detailed account of the nature of atoms. Dalton's theory stated that atoms were indivisible particles with different atomic weights. He also proposed that atoms could combine to form compounds. Dalton's theory was a major breakthrough in chemistry, and it helped to establish atomism as the foundation of modern science. It has been used to explain a wide range of phenomena, from the properties of matter to the behavior of light to the structure of DNA. While atomism has had a significant impact on developing the modern scientific method, it has also had an impact on philosophy, raising questions about the nature of reality, the relationship between mind and matter and free will. Let's take a look at these philosophical discussions that arise from atomism. One of the most important philosophical implications of atomism is reductionism. Reductionism is the view that complex things can be reduced to their fundamental components, atoms, and thus can always be explained in terms of physical laws. This has led to the development of physicalist theories of mind, which hold that the mind is merely a physical phenomenon. One criticism of the physicalist theories of mind is that it ignores the emergent properties of complex systems. Emergent properties are properties that cannot be predicted from the properties of the system's constituent parts. For example, the property of consciousness is an emergent property of the human brain. It cannot be predicted from the properties of individual neurons. Another important philosophical implication of atomism is determinism. Determinism is the view that every event is caused by previous events. In the case of atomism, determinism suggests that the motion of atoms is governed by physical laws. 
Determinism has raised important philosophical questions about the nature of free will. If our actions are determined by physical laws, then does it make sense to say that we have free will? Some philosophers have argued that determinism is incompatible with free will, while others have argued that free will is still possible, even if our actions are determined by physical laws. Atomism has also been used to argue for different views about the meaning of life. Some philosophers have argued that atomism implies that life is meaningless, because we are simply machines made up of atoms. Others have argued that atomism does not imply that life is meaningless and that we can still find meaning in our lives even if we are made up of atoms. Modern criticisms of atomism in a scientific context mostly center around its relationship with quantum physics. Basically, it can't be used to explain certain observations that have been made at the quantum level. This implies that our study and application of this philosophy may be incomplete. However, atomism is still the best theory that we have for explaining the behavior of most matter. Atomism has provided the underlying framework for the modern scientific method, especially in the physical sciences. While we do see some limits or gaps in this philosophy to raise some criticisms of it, it remains one of the most important philosophical concepts of today. Thanks for watching. Please give us a like if you enjoy this video and feel free to comment to let us know your thoughts on it. Also, check out our other study review videos on other philosophers and philosophies.